This is the most powerful and advanced backtester on TradingView. At Luxalgo, we have three main toolkits, the signals and overlays, the oscillator matrix, and the price action concepts. The most frequent questions we get about these toolkits are, do they actually work? What's the win rate? How can we test it for ourselves? That's why we've developed not one, but three cutting edge systems to backtest every element of each indicator, pushing the bleeding edge of what's possible on TradingView and uncovering extremely powerful and never before seen strategies. Today, we're giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the signals and overlays backtester and explaining all the functions made available right at your fingertips. So let's get right into it. When you're going to backtest a strategy, the first thing to consider is how much data you would like to use in your backtest. This is extremely important because if you use a small amount of data to test or develop a system, it may trick you into thinking your strategy is profitable, when in reality it is not. So, when backtesting, we recommend having at least 100 trades. But the more data you have, the closer you will come to uncovering a strategy's true performance. The backtester allows you to use a certain number of bars, start from a specific date, or use the entire history. If you decide to use the bars option and you input 3000, it will only backtest using the last 3000 candles. If you choose the date option, you can select the exact year, month, and day you would like to start and end your backtest. Entire history, as the name suggests, will use the entire history that can be seen for that ticker on TradingView. But it also allows you to use TradingView's deep backtest feature, which can pull data far beyond what you can see on the chart. Once you've decided when you would like to start your backtest, we'll then need to set up our strategy. Now the way the Signals and Overlays Toolkit primarily provides signals is through the Trend Confirmation or Contrarian modes. These signals can be adjusted to be more or less reactive with the Sensitivity Input or the Autopilot feature. If you are not using the Autopilot feature, a dashboard with a list of sensitivity values will be shown, which shows you how well each value performed. We'll cover this feature in more detail later in this video, but this is where you would choose what value to input into sensitivity. Now that we've chosen the sensitivity of our signals, we can move on to setting up the details of our long and short trades. You can enter trades not only based on the main confirmation or contrarian signals, but also based on any of the five overlays from the indicator. Here's an example of a trade setup. If you want to enter based on the smart trail, you must first disable the signal type, then enable the smart trail. You can then use the dropdown to tell the system when you would like to take the entry from the smart trail, and we'll use a switch up or down. Now the indicator will take an entry when the smart trail is switching directions. Just like this, the other options also have a similar dropdown, allowing you to choose exactly how you want to use each feature. It is important to note that if you have more than one entry condition selected at a time, they may act as filters. In this example, we have confirmation signals, but we also have the smart trail enabled and set to bullish. This means that a trade will only be taken if the smart trail is bullish when a signal is detected. We can even take it a step further and set the signal to bullish classifier and input values 2, 3, and 4. This way a trade will only be taken if the smart trail is bullish when a signal is detected and only if that signal is rated a 2, 3, or 4, ignore if it's a 1. The trend strength feature from the dashboard is also available. This is a great way to filter out trades in consolidating markets. We can set the reading to be greater than or lower than a certain value before a trade is taken. The session options allow you to choose specific times to enter trades. For example, if I am backtesting the entire year of 2021, but only want to enter trades between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., we can set that here. And now notice trades are only taken during this time period. We also have access to what is called external sources. We have three external sources, and they allow you to use your own indicators as part of the strategy. For example, here we have the MACD indicator alongside the Signals and Overlays Toolkit. If we wanted to backtest confirmation signals, but only when the signals appear during a bullish MACD reading, which is when the MACD line is greater than the signal line. We can easily do that using the external sources. So for the first option, we select the MACD line. Then for the conditional operator, we select greater than. And for the final field, we select the signal line. This now reads, MACD line must be greater than signal line. And since we also have our signal type enabled, it will act as a filter, causing trades to only be taken if the MACD is bullish. One of these three external sources allows you to input a specific value, and that field also accepts placeholders such as close, high, and low. For the external source to work, you must have your external indicator on the chart, and the indicator must provide a plot for the signal you want to use in the backtester. Now, by default, when a trade is taken, the trade will remain open until another is detected. But if you would like to ignore new signals until you reach take profit or stop loss, then you can enable this feature to 
Don't allow trade until closed. Speaking of take profit and stop loss, our next section covers setting stop loss and take profit options. The system provides a number of ways to set profit or stop loss. You can set your stop loss to a specific price, currency amount, a certain number of ticks, percentage, ATR value, or a trailing stop loss. The take profit options are the same, except instead of a trailing stop, you have a forecast option. The forecast option is an advanced feature that looks at the performance of past trades and determines the most likely take profit zone based on past performance. The trailing stop feature is based on percentage, and if enabled, it will trail the price preventing you from giving back profits as it moves in your direction. If I want to set my trade to have a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio, I can simply select my stop loss feature, for example, ATR with a value of 1. Then, if my take profit is also set to ATR, I can set that to a value of 2. The value inputted in the box acts as a multiplier for the value returned by the option selected, and if you have plot take profit and stop loss enabled, you can see them visually on your chart. External sources also make a return here, allowing you to use external indicators as take profit or stop loss triggers. It functions just as we showed you before. However, when using an external source, you will be able to close partials. For example, once a take profit condition is met, instead of closing 100% of your trade, you can close 50% and allow the rest to run. You can also do this with built-in exits provided by the Signals and Overlays Toolkit and the Exit Long and Short Time which allows you to close partials or the full trade at a specific time on the chart. And our final exit options are exit on signal and exit on entry. If exit on signal is enabled, it forces the system to exit a position once a confirmation or contrarian signal is detected, and the exit on entry option forces an exit when a new position is detected. We also have the overlay settings, which allow you to adjust how reactive each overlay is to price data. This is very useful as it helps us adapt to different market conditions to find what works best. Just make sure to copy these settings to the signals and overlays indicator as well. That way, you'll be able to see the changes on the chart. We also have settings for the forecast feature. When the forecast is enabled, the way you can think about it is if the projected forecast is in the same direction as your trade, it might have a higher chance of being accurate. This can also help you determine where to potentially place your stop loss if executing trades manually. Below that, we have the optimizer. This optimizer works alongside the advanced optimization dashboard. The optimization dashboard provides a quick overview of which settings will give you the best performance on the asset, allowing you to fine-tune the indicator based on your desired outcome. The dashboard returns information such as the number of trades taken, win rate, profit factor, maximum drawdown, potential ratio, and which sensitivity value yields the best performance. If we want to test more sensitivity values, we can simply increase the range of values here. By default, the dashboard is set to find the sensitivity value that returns the highest profit, but we can adjust that to prioritize any of the other stats available on the dashboard. The entry price price area feature allows you to see the running PNL of an active trade, where red indicates when the trade is in drawdown, and green shows when it is in profit. This allows you to visually see how long your trades typically remain in drawdown before moving into profit. And finally, you will find the long alerts messages and short alerts messages options. This feature allows the backtester to trigger an alert when any of these conditions are met. The entry message triggers when your long or short entry conditions are met, and the exit message will trigger when you exit a trade based on a signal or built-in exits. The trailing stop and stop loss options will alert you when the stop loss or take profit levels are reached, and the TS option will alert you when the trailing stop causes an exit. The exit long take profit and stop loss will provide an alert if you are using external sources for take profit and stop loss. Now that we've gone over all the features within this backtester, Let's quickly go over how you can use these features together to backtest a new strategy. Now, we can, of course, create a new strategy to backtest, or we can easily find a strategy that is already performing well using the AI backtesting assistant. If we go to the AI assistant, we can let the AI know what asset we're trading, what time frame we would like to trade, and what features we'd like to use. With this, we can pull from thousands of strategies to find one with a low drawdown or a high win rate. Maybe we want over 1,000 trades. There is so much we can get using this AI. It will provide all the details we need for the back tester, such as the entry conditions and start date, and we can just input those and start optimizing our strategy. But of course, we can also create a strategy from the ground up on any market, and it's also super easy to do. Here's how we'll approach it. Here, we're looking at a random asset, and we can see that the strategy's performance by default is not very great. However, we also see that this backtest is based on a small amount of trading data. So we'll increase the number of bars to ensure at least 100 trades in our backtest. Now that we have a larger sample size, we can begin improving our strategy, as it is still clearly underperforming. We'll continue using the signals for entries, 
but a good starting point is checking the dashboard to see which sensitivity value is suggested as the best based on these market conditions. After inputting that value, we now have a slightly better performing strategy. Now it's usually a good idea for your strategy to have a fixed stop loss or a trailing stop. So we'll head to the take profit and stop loss options and set a trailing stop to limit the drawdown and secure profits as the trade moves in our favor. As I input different values, notice that the suggested sensitivity value in the dashboard changes. This is because the optimizer constantly determines the best sensitivity based on the conditions used to enter and exit the trades. I think we found a good value. For this strategy, we want to allow the possibility of trades running into extremely large profits, so we won't set a take profit option, since our trailing stop will track the price and can also act as our take profit. We'll also add a trend-based overlay in order to help filter trades only in trending markets. And we can also go down to overlays settings and adjust the value of the overlay until we start to see decent performance. We'll go down to the settings and also increase the range of sensitivity values to make sure there are no other values that might offer better performance. Now, things are starting to look much better. At this point, it's important to remember that. Just because a strategy performed well does not necessarily mean it will continue to perform well in the future. To illustrate this, imagine you're a driver on a racetrack. Up to this point, you know the route well. You know when to take two left turns and one right turn based based on past experience. However, if you continue driving into unfamiliar territory and assume the same pattern applies, you could end up making a wrong turn and getting into an accident. In trading, relying solely on past data without adapting to changing conditions can lead to poor future outcomes. We need to ensure we have a robust and adaptable strategy. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about the system. All these features and more are covered in great detail in our documentation at luxalgo.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.